Hey guys, Jafar here. This video will cover the Fishing Village Monument and its locations, traders, safety and features along with boats and how they operate. You can easily locate the fishing villages by opening your map with G and locating the fishing village or large fishing village labels at the edge of the map at the coastlines. You will also see its trader icon which will show what they sell and for how much. Fishing villages may also contain a bunker entrance nearby allowing you to get down into the freight tunnel system and acquire some extra loot. In total for a 4500 size map, there should be 3 fishing villages with different layouts. One will be the large fishing village which will host more buildings and platforms. However, it does not contain any additional loot or utilities compared to the other smaller villages. Once you have arrived, make sure to put away all weapons as the fishing village is a safe zone. Otherwise, you will be targeted for 30 seconds which can be seen by the red crosshair icon in the top right of your screen. If you shoot, your timer will increase to 1 minute and if shot by a turret will max out at 5 minutes. The time will reset if you go back into the safe zone before the time is up. The red crosshair will also appear if you have recently shot players even outside the safe zone, so make sure to wait before going in. There are two traders and one vending machine at the fishing village. The trader will open a dialogue menu from which you can select multiple options. With the first trader behind the counter, you can choose to purchase boats or open its trading window to purchase a kayak and paddle blueprint or torpedoes for your submarine. When purchasing a boat, you can select either the small motor boat for 125 scrap, a rib boat for 300 scrap, a small submarine for 200 scrap, and a large submarine for 300 scrap. The second trader will sell diving equipment, fishing bait and a fishing rod. Finally, there is a vending machine that lets you trade fish for scrap. Fishing while inside the village can be a great and safe way of making scrap and catching some food. Additionally, in future updates there will likely be a mission trader found at the fishing village. To get the rewards, you will be requested to perform tasks like killing a certain number of boars at a specific location. I will likely have a dedicated video for missions when they come out. The small motorboat is perfect if you're in a smaller group that doesn't have a massive amount of low grade fuel to burn. In total, the small motorboat will seat 4 people. You can either purchase it at a fishing village for 125 scrap or find it randomly spawning around the coastlines of the map. The small motorboat takes low grade fuel to run and will consume 6 fuel per minute. You can place the fuel in by getting into the driver's seat and turning your head around to open the fuel storage. Once filled, exit the menu and press E on the engine to start it. When on the front seat or standing at the front, you can access the 12 slot small stash to store items. Next is the rib, which is a faster and stronger alternative to a small motorboat. The rib is great for larger groups who need to seat more players or for people who need to escape in a hurry. In total, the rib will seat 6 people. The rib can be purchased at the fishing village for 300 scrap and cannot be found naturally, but instead can be found on the back of the cargo ship event. The rib still takes low grade fuel to run and will consume 15 per minute. You can place the fuel in by getting into the driver's seat and looking down to access the fuel storage. You can also access the front storage container, which will hold a total of 30 items. Finally for the boats we have the kayak, which is the only boat you can craft and loot. The kayak is a two-seated craft and will need a paddle to move, which means it's considerably slower when compared to motor vehicles. With the paddle in hand, you can use right and left mouse buttons to either paddle left or right. You can also have a friend up front paddling to make it faster. The kayak blueprint can be purchased at the fishing villages for 50 scrap or can be crafted at a level 1 workbench, with a tech tree cost of 115 scrap. The paddle doesn't require a workbench to craft but it's unlocked through a level 1 workbench tree and can be purchased for 25 scrap at the village. The kayak can be looted from within sunken chests, crates and scientists. Next we have the submarines which can submerge with the control key and shift key to go back up. Let's start with the small submarine which only features one seat and is the cheapest of the two. The small sub can be purchased at the fishing village for 200 scrap and cannot be naturally found. The small sub will consume 7.8 low grade fuel per minute and can be refueled externally or inside the fuel tank at the back. To open inside, make sure to alt look around so it can be accessed. 
While in the driver's seat, you can look down to access the torpedo inventory. Here you can insert your purchased or crafted torpedoes to fire them with a left click. Finally, for the vehicles, we have a large submarine. The large sub features two seats, making it more desirable and economical for groups. It can be purchased at the fishing village for 300 scrap and cannot be found naturally. The large sub will consume 9 fuel per minute and can be refueled internally by getting in the passenger seat. While in the driver's seat, you can look down to access the torpedo inventory. Here you can insert your purchased or crafted torpedoes to fire them with a left click. The large sub features a fuel gauge to the right with a sonar display in the center of the screen. The sonar will detect other submarines which will display as a little green dot, along with the underwater labs being displayed as a little red dot. Both submarines contain a light which can be toggled with F. You might consider turning this off close to the surface to avoid detection and only turning it on while deep underwater. Considering both submarines can fire torpedoes, let's have a look at the ammunition. Previously, there were two types including the surface and direct torpedo, but as of recently, the surface torpedo has been removed. So let's have a look at the direct torpedo which fires in a straight line from where the submarine is positioned. This torpedo can be used to fight submarines, boats, people or sharks. The torpedo deals 430 damage and can be researched for 75 scrap and crafted a level 2 workbench. It will take 2,500 scrap to unlock the direct torpedo in the tech tree. It takes two torpedoes to take down the large submarine, one to destroy a small submarine, two to destroy a rib, one to destroy a rowboat, and around 86 to destroy a stone wall, making them practical for raiding. Don't get too complacent hiding away within your submarine as they now contain an oxygen meter, which means you cannot continue to remain inside them indefinitely. You will need to periodically rise to the surface to refill the oxygen within the submarine. You can also wear a diving tank which will take over when the submarine has run out of oxygen, giving you more time underwater. Currently, you have 10 minutes of breathable oxygen, however this might change in future updates as it was recently added. Like the other boats, in the latest update, submarines also support storage containers. The large submarine has a chest within the floor in the middle of the vehicle and can be accessed from both the front and back seats. The small submarine has a storage chest outside the vehicle next to the fuel tank and can be accessed from both outside and inside the vehicle by looking around to the left of the fuel tank and opening it through the wall. For any boat and submarine, you can press X to change the seats and if you do it while the boat is traveling forward, it will continue to run and move in a straight line for around 10 to 15 seconds allowing you to get into a seat which lets you shoot out of while remaining in motion. If left for too long, the boat will eventually turn and spin out of control. Additionally, if the boat gets stuck on land, you can jump out and find the push icon. Continue to press E on it while slowly pushing it to the water. This also works if you flip your boat out at sea and need to correct its orientation, but you must be standing on the top of it to work. The primary use for boats and submarines is to travel to the oil rigs, getting on the cargo ship event, reaching the underwater labs, or collecting the randomly spawned junk piles within the sea. These junk piles can provide you with normal barrels, oil barrels, and toolboxes. The wealth of barrels and toolboxes makes looting junk piles rewarding as you can quickly obtain metal tools, clothing, and scrap. While owning a boat or submarine, you must also consider decay. Rowboats, the rib, and submarines will start to decay after 45 minutes of being unused while left outside. It will take a total of 240 minutes to be destroyed or 180 minutes if left in deep water. So if you want to keep your vehicles for extended periods, build a boat base with a roof and door. While within the fishing village, you are completely immune from damage dealt by other players. Even if there is a sniper out of range from the turrets, their bullets will not damage you. You can still die by full damage, environmental effects, or the turrets. The safe zone will also mark you as an enemy after sleeping there for around 10 minutes. However, if you do die, other players cannot loot your items, meaning you can return and take your stuff without worry. The village is surrounded by turrets which will target any player who have recently dealt damage to other players or are banned from the village. It is impossible to deal damage to the turrets or NPCs within the safe zone, making it pointless to fight back if targeted. When purchasing a boat, you will have a 5 minute safety window where other players cannot get in and steal it. 
If you wait longer than 5 minutes, anyone can take your boat and fuel. This exists so someone can't block the boat trader, stopping people from purchasing new boats. If you decide to fly or ride in with a horse, remember to always stay within the vehicle, otherwise players will attempt to steal it. If you fly in with a minicopter without a second passenger, expect other players to hop into your vehicle to troll, since you cannot shoot them out. Along with the new addition of fishing and the safety of the fishing village, it makes it a great location to sit and fish without the worry of other players attempting to kill you. However, watch out for other people jumping on your head and pushing you into the water, which will cancel the fishing making you lose one bait. A final tip is you can use the safe zone as a depot location to temporarily store loot. If you have recently got into a fight or raid and need to safely store your loot and get back to the action, you can run into the safe zone and kill yourself. Other players will be unable to loot your items and depending on the loot inside the bag, it could remain there for a long time. Return once you have finished the fight or raid to collect your items. It is unlikely for the fishing village to have ores within its safe zone, but it is useful to know you can still use certain tools to smack things. Most tools or weapons you cannot use within the safe zone, however the rock is the only tool you can use within the safe zone that has harvest statistics. So if you see stone ores, you can plant your rock and harvest it without any fear of people killing you and taking your resources. Additionally, you can use the rock or paddle to smash barrels and signs within the safe zones, along with a fishing rod to gather and sell fish. The Fishing Village is a smaller safe zone monument that gives you easy access to boats and diving equipment for going to oil rig, underwater labs, or looting junk piles out at sea. Remember to not be targeted before coming in, otherwise you will be killed. That's all for this video, thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.